right there. Oh, okay. What's over here, though? Dude! Oh, yeah! The metal structure. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to punish you with the bullshit of that video for too long. But I've noticed that there is a, a lot of these videos out here that are saying that, oh, scientists have discovered the Garden of Eden. And all they're doing is showing you different underground cave systems or underground river systems, spring systems, where people have found them. And these can be found all over the world. And yet they want to claim that this is the Garden of Eden. It's clipbait. That's all it is. It's just clickbait. But let's look at what the actual Bible says about the Garden of Eden. It says that the Garden of Eden, that there are four rivers that come out of it. The Euphrates, the Tiger, the Pison, and the Gihon. Right? So, nowhere on the planet can you find these rivers. Now, it is believed that underneath the Persian Gulf, that there are two, could possibly be two ancient rivers that are under there, and that could be the site of the Garden of Eden. But underwater archaeology has yet to find it. And it wouldn't be found in a cave. It would be found under the Persian Gulf if it existed. But thinking how people would have been thinking at the time frame of these writings, which would have been between or, or roughly around 900, 700 BCE, they would have thought that the most lush place would have been where these rivers meet. Where, because they lived along the Euphrates and the Tigris. That's the area that we call the Mesopotamia. And these were lush, green areas because they were, they were supplied by these rivers and people had understood how to irrigate and things of that nature. So logically, for the people writing of that day during that time frame, that's the most likely place to put the story. But the problem is they were just making shit up just like everybody else was. Because it was believed through the Sumerians and Arcadians that the um, Garden of Edan in Chaldea was generally located down where the Persian Gulf is today. And there are some scientists who believe that uh, at a time frame, all that land that is the Persian Gulf was actually not underwater. And that when the Young Adrias flood happened, that it broke through what broke through the wall for the, I think it's the Arabian Sea, and would have flooded that whole area creating the Persian Gulf. Now, I myself have sailed between this little, that area where you go into the Persian Gulf. And you can see that it's a short strait. And it's possible that land could have been there and blocked the Arabian Sea from flooding it. And I think it's the Arabian Sea. I might be incorrect about that one. But whatever that body of water is called today could have flooded that area and then made that into the Persian Gulf, which would be a flood story because people would have been living there, which would be a destructive thing that would have happened immediately because the Younger Dry's flood happened over six days. So that could be an, something that people then later on created stories about it and made it a worldwide thing because that would have been their entire world, their entire world would have been destroyed as far as their perception of what the world was at that time frame. But this being the Garden of Eden, according to their story, it says that no man would be able to find it. It says that it will be guarded by a cherubim with a flaming sword. Where the hell is the cherubim in that story? And then the last part, they found metal. They found some little metal tower looking uh, some construction equipment that looks like something we build today when you're building scaffolds or building a crane. They found metal down there. They didn't have that kind of metal work at that time frame. Adam and Eve weren't doing metal work. It wasn't later until you get, I believe, Tubal Cain that you get metal working and all of his people were so-called destroyed by this flood. So how do you get metal working down in the Garden of Eden? Did the angel with the flaming sword just let the metal go by? What the hell are they talking about? This is just more bullshit of how they just try to make up these stories and make it fit into today's world. And it just does not fit. 
this is why this story is mythy is myth and why it's all mythological why it's just made up and people just trying to explain what was going on in their society and in the society of their forefathers and just ancient fairy tales that people continue to tell in order for them to justify some kind of heritage some type of um, ancestry and it's just all propaganda so y'all have a great day and remember always you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable good journey good vibration